everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Sara here. Thank you so much for joining me today for a video I am really excited about. It is a new pen day video for me and uh, some new ink as well. So this pen represents a couple of firsts for me. It's the Pilot E95Fs in a fine nib. 14 karat. But before I go into all the details about the pen and show you some writing samples, what are the first that it represents? Number one, it's the first pen that I've bought secondhand from someone from the Fountain Pen Australia and Oceana Facebook group. Number two, it's my first gold pen. I don't know why I took such a big pause then, 14 karat. Number three, it's my first grail pen, I guess. I have a couple of pens on that grail on things that I know would be really special and I'm not just jumping to buy. I love that I was able to get a pen that I've really wanted um, but also get it secondhand. Like it's gone from one pen owner to another. I, th I even said to him when I bought it, I said, like, this is going to a good home. I'm so excited to, to have this pen. The person I bought it off was also selling some inks. He is still a selling more and it's taking a lot of self-control not to contact him and get again and say, I want to buy this, this, and this. But I, two of inks that he was selling, bottles, um, caught my attention. Um, it was pretty incredible. Like in his listing, it said, you know, the ink bottles are at least 80% full. Um, this one, I feel like like 95 and this one was 90. So like really great seller as well. The two inks that caught my eye were Robert Oster Hippo Purple, which I had never heard of before, and Robert Old Oster Gold Antica. Antiqua. Antica? Antica. Let's go with Antica, which is actually inked in this at the moment. So I'm going to go to the inks in a second, but first we're going to talk about this pen. Um, you can see my finger marks on it, um, but that's Okay, so as I said, this is the Pilot E95S in a fine nib. It's called, it's a black finish with gold trim. I think it's called the Piano Black. The cool thing about this pen is that it has an inlaid nib. I'll just bring that up close. 14 karat, fine. It is a um, cartridge converter pen. This is one of the ones, I'm just being careful because it is inked up. It's one of the the sack ones. Um, I know that people have a really big issue with these and not being able to get full ink capacity. As someone who's exploring lots of different inks at the moment, it's not such a big deal for me. I don't need a pen to hold, you know, like two, three mil of ink. Um, and I just use a little syringe and syringe it in any way. Um, so for some people that's a drawback, for others it's not. What I love about this pen is that when it's, is it going to when it's capped, it looks like a pocket pen. I'll do a comparison here. So it's still a bit bigger. That's the Quebeco Sport. But when you uncap it, it turns into a full-size pen. Really comfortable as well. So if I was to cap this one, you can see it is bigger there. It has a nice weight to it. Um, it's heavier than the Caveco. Um, when it's posted, it doesn't feel back heavy, which um, I love sometimes. Like the Twisby, as an example, I find if I post that, it feels back heavy for me. I have quite small hands. So I love that the cap adds a bit of weight, but it it's distributed throughout the pen and it feels quite nice. Um, I mean, I probably could actually write with it unposted, but I, I like writing with it posted. I don't think it's called a snap cap. It's like a, I don't know what that's called. I guess it is a snap, but it just closes really nicely, has a really nice clip. Um, all in all, it's just really beautiful. In terms of how it writes, we'll get to that in a second. I know some people say that this pen, it's like a bouncier nib, so you can get a little bit of flex, but it is not a flex nib. Um, I've tried that a little bit, but as it's my first gold 
the pen up, I really don't want to destroy it. So um, I'm being really careful, but I'll see if I can do some samples in a moment. Just seeing any other details, you know, it says pilot down the bottom there. Um, I'm so, I feel really lucky and excited to have purchased this pen. The two inks I bought as well, two Robert Oster inks, reasons that I bought them. Robert Oster Hippo Purple, I'm in love with purple inks at the moment and I had never heard of this. I'd never come across it in inks watching videos or blogs or anything. Um, I did a bit of Googling and from what I can gather, there was a Kickstarter campaign for Hippo Notebooks and Robert Oster did a exclusive ink as part of that Kickstarter. So I'll just bring it up here a bit closer. Um, it's really, it's interesting. It's, I don't know if I'd call it a true purple. Is It's got like a burgundy. There's definitely some browns and some reds in there. Haven't inked it up in a pen yet, but I quite like it. The other ink I got was Robert Oster Gold Antica. I was watching a Karina Loves to Plan video and she was watching Rose Gold Antica and it looked incredible. And then, and that's been on my list. And then I, I'm not sure, maybe I was reading the mountain of ink review of, of this one of Gold Antica and I'm like, oh, that there's something interesting about that as well. So because um, it was for sale, I thought, why not? What's really intriguing about this ink is, is it green? Is it brown? Is it yellow? It's kind of gold. It's gold without being metallic, which is really cool and interesting. I'll just bring it up closer there. It writes, so I've only inked it up in this pen, but it writes really nicely. And when I first swatched it, I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but I'm actually really enjoying writing with it. And I, you know, I could see it loud noise outside I could see in a currently inked rotation it being like a nice accompaniment to another green ink or a brown ink you know to help kind of connect connect them so putting them to one side I also where is it did some swatches in here so you can see it there it's just got like you can see like there's bits of brown there and then as it pulls heavier, it gets green, but in the middle, there's almost like a touch of red. It's such an intriguing color. It comes across a little bit more green on the camera. It does read a more goldy, yellowy in person. Do you reckon there's ever gonna be a video where I don't knock the camera? I'm not sure. And then Robert Oster, Hippo Purple. Ooh, I mean. So beautiful where it pulls. This is written with my Pilot Iro Sushi dip pen, so it's a fine nib. But even in the fine nib, there's actually touches of shading, which is really nice. Again, I think that's just a really interesting color. It's not really a purple that I have. Um, I'm happy I went with it. I can definitely see myself using that. I quite like it. And I'm pretty certain that in my next ink rotation, that one will be in there. So I thought we could do two writing samples of this. As I said, it's inked up with this. The first writing sample I'm going to do is I actually, I need to add it to my December currently inked. So it puts down a really nice amount of ink. You can kind of see there it's still drying. This is the Pilot E95S 14K Fine Nib. Robert Oster. It just writes so smoothly. It's beautiful. It glides across the page. You know, it's a fine nib, but it just feels so smooth. Interestingly, because um, I know that usually like the Asian brands and Pilot are on the thinner side. I don't see that to be a overly fine, fine. Um, comparing, I mean, that's the Twisby Extra Fine up there, Platinum. But 
even in that fine nib, you get some really nice uh, layering of ink, even at the top of that 14, there's a little bit of shading there. So that's on Stalogy paper. Always going to get ghosting no bleed through, no feathering, and the pen was just a pleasure to write with. Thought I'd also just do a sample. This is just Claire Fontaine paper. Just waiting for the construction to go, but maybe I should write while there is construction and then talk after. So this is the Pilot B95S. And I thought on this paper, I'll see if I can do a little bit of bounce that, that people do talk about. So normal downstroke, adding a bit normal, adding a bit. Now I'm not adding a lot of pressure there, just a little bit, but if we get that in focus, there is some line variation there. So I do understand why people are calling that a, a, a bouncy nib. Now I haven't had a lot of practice, but I wonder if I can try and write something. It's not going very well. Maybe I finally got it on the last letter. So ignore that part, but looking at that M, how close can I bring that? You can see that as I've pushed down, you're getting more and then it's getting lighter. You're getting some really nice shading there. So all in all, this is a beautiful pen. It lays down, as I said, pretty nice amount of ink. Um, at the moment, I have nothing bad to say about it. I haven't um, cleaned it yet, so I, I don't have any feedback on how they clean. I know that that sack filler is um, quite annoying, but I really do find just using a syringe um, really helpful. Um, so that's it. Probably a shorter, a bit of a shorter video, but that's my my new pen and two new inks, and I'm so excited and grateful to to be able to add this pen to my collection. I'm riding with it already, already, and really, really enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will chat to you guys again soon.